very, very high point for us because we had heard how big we were in Brazil. And uh, people had talked about their tour. And other people said to us, you are much bigger. So when we came over and uh, we came into the stadium at Maracanã and it was packed with all these people, you are so touched to fly 12 hours to see people who are your neighbors. They are not people in another country. They are your friends. They live on the same street as you, and they embrace you as family. So it's very powerful. And um, we didn't want to come back until now because I think we made such a big impression, and we gave our hearts and souls that we wanted to make sure that when we came back, we could give as much. And we are here because we can give that much. I'm taking the stuff and all this blow and all this. When we first started, we, uh, we knew right away that we were going to kill the synthesizer player next door who's making that sound, Tim Rosner. And uh, thank you. When we first started, we made sure that uh, everybody around us, managers, record company, road crew, all had the same vision, the same excitement, the same uh, feeling that something important was happening. So some of the best ideas did not come from the band. The record company president, Neil Bogart, thought the drums should go up in the air. Somebody else thought one of us should breathe fire. Uh, so all the ideas really came from people, from the family. People always think it's always just KISS. The truth is, ideas come from everywhere. For instance, here in Brazil, we're going to do a song called Take It Off, where we're going to have beautiful local Brazilian talent. Beautiful girls coming up on stage and dancing to the song. Well, the idea, the song was written by Paul, but the idea of having the girls was from Eric Singer, who said, hey, it's a great idea. Hey, it's a great idea. <coughs> Eric said, let's see some tetas grandes. Changes of lineup or? I think we reached a point where perhaps we listened to too many people outside of the band, and perhaps we became at one point a bit lazy with our own success. And sometimes you begin to believe that you want to please the critics and you want to please people who really are not your friends. And you start to go away from what is honest. And uh, you believe that you are giving 100%, but you are perhaps serving a different master. You know, you are not working for what you once believed in. And it sometimes takes a while before you, you sit and you say, you know, we're on the wrong road. You take a journey and sometimes you, the road forks off and you go this way and you go down for quite a way and suddenly you go, we're on the wrong road. We have to go back. You found out this. But I think by the late 80s, we finally thought, you know, we need to get back to our roots. We need to get back to a pure form of rock and roll. But it's not so simple just to say, okay, we're gonna turn up the amps. We had to, as people, stop bullshitting and doing things besides the band and spending time away from the music. We had to commit ourselves again to being a band and making music what the most important priority was for us. It wouldn't be a matter of, oh, if we turn up, we're gonna sound like we once did. Your frame of mind and where your heart is is what counts. Where your heart is now, like what do you like doing in music, the band, with the band. This is that this last album satisfy you, like Revenge is the right album of, of keys or? Well, I, I think you can only do the best. If you feel at the end of the day that you've done the best you can do, like on a particular record, then that's where the satisfaction is. When it comes to the next record, then you try to start all over again and make the best record you can make. And it's really about the songs. It's it's not about trends or style or anything. I mean, Kiss is if you listen from the even with without the makeup, just on the records alone. You know, when you're sitting in your room with a stereo, you don't have the makeup to look at. You have just the songs and the music to listen to, and that's what Kiss is about music and so the whole idea I think I think everyone will probably agree the band's trying to basically go back almost like things go full circle and that's you know what is the band about it's about music and songs so I think that's where you know the direction is rather than worrying about what's going on in the music world a lot you have a record company that convinces you that you work for them 
when they really work for you. But um, we were very pleased with the way the album turned out, but we are not pleased with our record company <laughs> putting this out like this because we were very concerned to make sure that our fans got the package the same around the world because we worked hard on it. And this is not fair, and we apologize, but we just found out about it now. And, cool. uh, and we are going to make sure that our record company is going to be punished. <laughs> and uh, this is, we don't play nice, because this is very important to us. And when, what's the record company here called? Polygram. Polygram. And Polygram in Brazil is going to change anything that we have to say to our fans. You can't rewrite our songs, you can't change our artwork, and you cannot change the insert on our album covers. And if you do, we will punish you, and you will see this happen. Many times uh, our fans have said, we want the ultimate kiss book. And sometimes people would attempt to make books. But the truth is, the only people who could do the ultimate kiss book is kiss. We have photos no one's ever seen of the band during the 70s without makeup. We have all kinds of documentation. Off stage, behind, behind the scenes traveling. Um, we have pictures of Eric Carr in his original makeup as the Hawk. Oh, yeah, of um, course. That's the right. Sun. We have interviews with people. Um, all kinds of amazing things. And we decided that rather than going through a book company, because uh, we met with some book companies, and they all, because they're very corporate, you know, with their suits and ties, they said, oh, you should put this in the book, you should leave this out. And they don't know shit about KISS. So we said, you know something? We will do the book ourselves. We will put the money up ourselves to do the ultimate KISS book. So the biographical, sir? It's going to be kind of biographical. Biographical with amazing photographs. There are 440 pages in the book. It weighs nine pounds, four and a half kilo. It is 11 and a half by 14 and a half. Huge book. It's this thick and it has a case that it slides into. And the first the first printing of the book is signed and numbered by the band. And the only way for someone to get the book is you must call. We have a number that we're going to give you so that you can call. Do the it. book is a $150 in the States because we spend so much time. And when we met with the book companies, they wanted to make it more expensive so they could make more money. We said, no, this book must be this price because we want to put all this information into it, but it is well worth the money, and the orders for the book are so phenomenal. And since we came into Brazil, almost as soon as we got off the plane, fans started saying, how can we get the book? 